thought I'd try this in in um, infrared mode. It works well when the when the light is low. When it's dark, it's you know it's not it's not really that good at all. Um, kind of need a light source to help it, but uh, when the light is low, it's dusk right now. It, it it works it works good. So I'm here at my my tenth spot by myself tonight. It's August 26, 2023. It's uh, it's just after 8 p.m. I got my tent set up here. And uh, I've been here for a couple hours. Um, there's been one weird kind of thing happen. Uh, so there, uh, there's a few mosquitoes out still, but um, they're almost gone. They'll, they'll disappear at some point you know, soon because the temperature is going to drop, going down to about 10 tonight, uh, Celsius, whatever that is in Fahrenheit, I don't know, sorry. But uh, I'm, I'm here by myself, like I said. Um, so there's this, uh, I was setting up the tent and, and I, ha I had this, uh, it's almost like a, like a hummingbird wing fluttering sound, you know, that vibrational sound. If you've, if you've ever, ever had a hummingbird fly near your head, you know, it's almost like a giant bug sound, right? And um, I've recorded that several times over the years, both here and at Duane's. And I've had it happen right near my microphone in temperatures that, you know, it just, it doesn't make sense, right? It, it shouldn't be happening. Um, so anyways, it happened once while I was setting up the tent and then it happened two more times within about 10 minutes you know just that weird fluttering uh, vibrational I don't know what it is I, I tend to think it's related to them, but I don't I don't know for sure. Um, I, I, it seems to be because there's nothing there. Like you know, I hear that and I look right away. It, it seems to be um, external, you know, not something happening in my ear, but close to it. Um, this is the spot where uh, I had a what sound like a bear sniffed the tent wall. Got a bear out of here. Sniff around my tent. Um, I've had some really bizarre, lucid dreams here. Um, one of them, I have this ridge behind me here. In one of them, um, I was in the in the dream. I was um, in the tent, and and they were. I think looking over top of the the ridge and I think they had some animals like canines with them or it was it, it just some bizarre stuff um, 
this is also the spot where I was sleeping in my tent one night and I got basically uh, something similar happened to Les Stroud. He told me about this, uh, where he felt he got sat on, you know, on a, in a sleeping bag, sleeping out in a sleeping bag one night. Not not here or anything, he hasn't been here, but uh, and it happened to me, same thing. And I was in my tent and it was when I was using my blue tent here at this spot and I got sat on. And I, I remember, you know, I'm in this dream, and I'm struggling. I'm thinking, there's a bear sitting on me, in the in this dream, and I'm struggling. And and I finally pulled out from underneath, and I and I woke up. Right away, and but I realized, you know, there was some weird stuff going on there. Um, sadly, my my audio recorder, the battery had ran out, so I didn't capture the, you know, the, the my actions. Um, this is where I've had the big tree pushed over. I think my friends just pushed the tree over. Had another tree pushed over with my nephew here. Um, uh, had a, a walk past the tents in the morning with my nephew here, and with another buddy of mine, John here. Again, with uh, you know heavy footsteps walking past the tents. There's been very minimal for vocals here. Um, I think that morning though there was a, a, a small vocal from Neff. There was. Um, there was one night, still a few mosquitoes in here. There was, there was one night where uh, I got my tent fly off tonight. There's no rain, right? So um, I did the, uh, something similar another night. And I, I think it was about 10.30 and I crawled in there. I don't know, you know, by myself, right? Just to lay down and that. And, and I had a toque on with a light, you know, on the front here. And, and just as I got comfortable, just got in the tent, got comfortable, and it was one of those dead still nights, and suddenly there's heavy footsteps walking right up here, right coming right towards me. I sat bolt upright, flipped the light on, nothing there, and and that was it, and the sound disappeared. So once that happened, I was comfortable, because I knew, you know, it wasn't a bear. I knew it was Neff, or one of his family. And um, once I know that, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm fine with it, right? I don't have any fear, but uh, there's anything and everything here, moose, bear. I have a, an audio recorder, another one I just picked up. Um, it's about 30 paces from my tent down in the woods here. It's where I always basically put a recorder. I tend to get a lot of activity uh, show up there, a lot of stick breaking and, and um, rock clacks, that sort of thing. That's where the, the deer confrontation happened. And
It's a it's a different vibe here from you know when Dwayne and I are together at, at his cottage. It's uh, I don't do things the same. Um, you know I'm not doing the written communication, uh, the marble thing, all that. It's it's a different situation. You know it's two different vibes. But when we're together, and then when I'm here by myself, uh, the activity has. You know, there's been no shortage of that happen here, so. Um, and I brought in my nephew and a friend of mine, John, and um, another buddy of mine. I, I brought in a few friends and and uh, family members. Actually, one fa only one family member, but. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's almost dark. I can see the, the screen on the, the video camera, so the the infrared on this thing works well, like really well in this light, you know. Wish it worked that good all the time in, in complete darkness, but, you know, it doesn't. It's a pretty good video camera, but... It's a um, boat, boat sound in the distance there. It'll quiet down tonight to, you know, gonna be, looks like it's gonna be one of those dead still nights, which I love. Hear big things walking around the forest. Tends to make things a little difficult to sleep sometimes. I even had a helicopter fly over here one night, so low, it was insanely low. Only once in all the years I've been here, it's not a flight path or anything, it's just, it was bizarre. Yet a who? You hear my friends? You know, I never have any expectations, but I I do hope that one one day they give something that is just it's all been mind blowing, really. But um, you know, you always want that little bit more. And they've been so giving. You know, I'm very grateful for all they've given all, you know, through the years. I've been spoiled with contact experience so much. Like, I have no fear of them at this point. I'm very comfortable in their presence. And they can be, uh, you know, can freak a lot of people out, you know, if, some, if somebody's here and not. Uh, I had a friend uh, tell me they were camping the other week, him and his buddy, and there was a lot of wind going on. But they heard this big, huge branch crack and then um, footsteps running. But younger, you know, younger sounding. But it still scared the hell out of them. I just laughed. It, it sounded like, you know, the hairy folks activity. And he's a, he's a friend of mine and, you know, and he's interested in this and I've talked to him about it. So when, when that happens... It, uh, there's been enough incidents of people experiencing things that um, it, it shows me that uh, we're being listened to, watched, whatever. I don't know how much, but but it definitely happens. So I'm going to uh, take a little walk here.
nephew here. I'd love to hear Neff just yell out here. Vocals have been very minimal here, but you know, they have happened. Their voice is something I just, it's like I can't get enough of it, just love it. Go down, check the audio. Oh. Over here. Flashlight with me. At least not right now. It's in the car. On a more recent visit with Dwayne, at one point we took a took a drive down some back roads. You know, we do this sometimes, and and we've had company with us before in the vehicle. This happens. Um, Sasquatch are interdimensional. They can go anywhere, anywhere it seems. You know, show up in your living room, whatever. But uh, we've had things happen. You know, where there's fingerprints on my window suddenly and uh, stuff on my seat, that sort of thing. Um, stuff has been flipped over the rear view mirror and, and t even tied, um, things like that. But uh, so this particular more recent visit, <clears throat> we had activity happen in the car. You know, there was, there was presence there and they were listening to our conversation. So at one point I mentioned something about uh, hoping that a tree doesn't get pushed over blocking the road, at, you know, doing these back road uh, drives. So this visit, this uh, August 26th visit at my, my tent spot here, um, uh, which is, you know, shortly after the, the last one between Dwayne and myself. And um, sure enough, I think it was uh, Ninyanin. Uh, he seems to be a main or predominant uh, individual at, uh, these days. Uh, young, young male, I think about 15 years old bigger foot than Neff had at 17 and uh, you know as I wrote earlier in the video responsible for a lot of the smells that have happened um, different smells both indoors and out and uh, he uh, after the deer thing um, I got a little bit of a shit smell right beside my tent I think I startled him with obviously startled startled him with that uh, air horn blast um, I was a bit concerned about the deer coming, tearing through my campsite, you know, right, right through my tent. That's the only reason I did that. Um, so anyways, uh, sure enough, tree got pushed over. I think it was about 9.30 at night. Um, I, I have audio from uh, three different uh, recorders. And shortly after that, I jumped in my vehicle and took a drive down the road. And sure enough, there it was. And... Um, 
I was hoping a local would come by at some point, you know, trying to get in or out, and they, uh, you know, and hope they'd have to get a chainsaw or whatever. But that didn't happen, so in the morning it was up to me, and I didn't, all I had was a Leatherman with a little saw on it, so the, the tree had gone between a couple trees on the other side of the road, so I couldn't drag it, I had to cut the ends off. So it took me close to an hour to get out of there, but finally did, so it wasn't, wasn't that big a tree, and I'm sure I was being watched and, and laughed at the whole time that was happening. So um, there's been, uh, as, as you've heard, there's, there's been a few trees go down over the years, and uh, I think this was entirely related to our conversation that uh, Dwayne and I had in the vehicle about a tree being pushed across the road and, you know, blocking our way. So um, I'll show you that footage. Uh, of that tree. That was uh, the August 26 visit that uh, I just came back from not long ago. Nine thirty seven PM it was a big tree crash just went just happened. city folk up cranking their tins so I figure I'm gonna take a little cruise up and down the, the road here Maybe we'll see something bear moose what an F family the road and I heard crash as loud as that other one I recorded when I hit the ground. It'd be cool to see a moose or a bear, even deer. Oh, then we got something. What do we got there? A raccoon. I mean a brick. A uh, porcupine. Yeah, a porcupine. Cool. Little guy. That's cool. Nice. Oh shit, the tree did go down across the road. <gasps> That's the tree I heard. Holy shit. 
for Leatherman. I just moved these uh, two trees with this. And it was stuck between the trees so I had to cut pieces off so I could drag it and it was pretty heavy. Anyways, I'm out of here finally. <laughs> Oh. 